So as he said, I'm Josh. I grew up in a family of meat and potatoes. Uh, I had a gourmet chef grandmother, uh, a deli daycare where I would be dropped off every day eating amazing food. Um, and so if you take a look at my family background, that's not really surprising. So on my mom's side, they grew up in Argentina. This is a place where you have a lot of dairy farmers, including my family. Uh, you add to that my dad's side of the family, uh, Fort Worth, Texas, born and raised, myself as well. This is a place where you literally still have cattle drives to the middle of town. Um, so you put those two together, and what do you get? Not surprisingly, pretty much every meal that I ate was a giant pile of meat. At one point in my life, I literally would literally brag that I ate steak every day for 40 days. Uh, and I thought that was an accomplishment. Um, <laughs> so it all changed um, on a very faithful trip. I like going up to Lake Tahoe, uh, one of my favorite things to do. You know, this is a trip that normally takes four or five hours. Uh, we got stuck in a really bad snowstorm. So about 10 hours into what should be a four or five hour trip, we're all really stir crazy in the car. Uh, we're having lots of crazy conversations. At one point, we were making animal noises to keep ourselves entertained. Uh, we had the car turned off. Everyone was basically sleeping in their car. And we got on the subject of nutrition. So a very good friend of mine up in the back in the audience, Brian Rabin, um, was really the man with the plan. Uh, he started talking about a plant-based diet. And you had a car full of extremely skeptical people. Uh, myself included, we had you know, four other people in the car besides Brian. We were peppering him with questions, saying, there's no way this is possible. There's no way you can be healthy. Um, you know, coming from my perspective, you know, all I really knew, I, I had learned a lot about cooking from my grandmother, um, and I really enjoyed cooking. I enjoyed cooking for my friends. But the foundation of everything that I would cook was really meat. And so I may make a side dish, but it's a side dish. It's a second thought. Um, and so you know, after this long conversation with Brian, I think he did a very good job of inspiring the rest of the group. Um, so those four, of, four others of us in the car um, all decided to go seven days no meat whatsoever. So a little bit of a support group in each other, challenging each other to try seven days with no meat. Uh, I think if you were to ask those who knew me at all, they would say, Josh, going seven days with no meat, not only no meat, but no animal products whatsoever. Uh, they would have told you that's absolutely impossible. Um, and so after those seven days, day eight, um, the first thing I did, A, was I ate a giant pile of pulled pork. And then B, I sort of reflected it was actually very easy for me to go seven days with no meat, no animal products whatsoever. Um, and I took a look at my own family history. I have two grandfathers who had quadruple heart bypasses. Not very surprising, given what I've been talking about, about my family history. I have a grandmother who passed away from diabetes. I have lots of cancer in my family. Uh, and so all of these things together really said, well, maybe I can try 30 days. And so 30 days quickly turned into more than a year and a half on a purely plant-based diet. Um, and so I didn't go into it lightly. Um, when I took a look at my own situation, I spent 10 or 12 years really building my body. Uh, I really enjoy physical fitness. I really enjoy bodybuilding. And I had a major concern that I would waste away. I would be skinny and sickly, and all of this work that I put in would, would just completely disappear. Um, so after more than two and a half years now of doing um, not only plant-based, but then maybe mostly vegetarian, um, totally a non-issue, I actually found that not only was I able to continue increasing my strength and my performance, um, but also saw massive gains in endurance as well. Um, so the other big concern, um, one of my favorite things to do is to eat. Um, it's one of my favorite ways to interact socially. And so I was concerned that you know, this is gonna be a very difficult thing for me to do if it's gonna be a battle, day in, day out, resisting things. So for me, it was much less about what I was giving up and much more about what I was actually coming to learn. Uh, so rather than feeling I, like I was missing out on foods, I really felt that I was opening my mind to so many different things that I would have never put on my plate had I been focused still on that giant pile of meat. Um, the results, you know, unfortunately I didn't get younger or taller as a result of this experiment. <laughs> um, I did precipitously drop my cholesterol. You know, this is a level that maybe some people, people wouldn't say was extremely dangerous, but a pretty high level of cholesterol. That cholesterol drop happened extremely quickly, as did the weight drop. Uh, I didn't think I had 35 pounds to lose, but I lost 35 pounds. I dropped my cholesterol precipitously. Noticed massive improvements in my performance, my, my ability to function at my work uh, and in my job. Um, so mental uh, improvements as well as physical improvements. Uh, and so I think this all really started with my friend Brian um, and a lot of the literature that I read and my own family history inspiring me to take about uh, you know, 30 days to make this change. 
And hopefully my inspiration, these things that inspired me, can also be an inspiration for you to believe that this is possible for you as well. Thank you.